Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video and I've got to talk to you today because there's been, listen, I had something lined up. I have something lined up um, tomorrow for you in terms of a little one-to-one -one on interview with someone who knows what is going on throughout this process, this ownership situation, um, all the finer details and can give us some clarity, some non-biased reporting on this um, because we've been getting quite a lot of that, haven't we? And that will still come out tomorrow. But you see why I haven't really indulged and got involved and entertained the nonsense people? Because look, today, Roman Statement drops on your doorstep to tell you the real... You know, bees between the knees and whatnot. Listen, he comes with the hard, hard-driven facts and he wants to get his point across. There's been so much fear-mongering, scare-mongering over the last couple of days talking about Chelsea are potentially going to go bust and this is, you know, a change of heart for this amount of money that we're looking to retrieve for debt and all of these little things circling around, which has really not really made any sense to me, hence why I haven't really spoken about it too much. Now, I'm being pretty calm on this ownership situation. I don't see the drama. I don't see Chelsea suddenly now having some sort of issue with their with their proceedings in terms of handing over the reins to Todd Bowie, who is still looking like he's going to, you know, go through those final stages and steps to get this ownership situation sorted. Because why would, and it, it weren't making any sense, and now now it really doesn't make any sense because it's come out, you know, Roman's statement from his, um, from his representative to come and speak to us again. Um, why would Roman now want to block off a potential sale and make things even more difficult with a deadline coming up? And go back on things that he said in terms of not taking amount, this amount of, you know, the 1.5 billion in debt. He's not going to put that pressure on, on, on the club to pay that back immediately. He's going to go through maybe a potentially different route, which it looks like he is with EU sanctions. Um, and that's going to go through that legally. And that's going to be a whole separate case. Maybe after the ownership situation is sorted, um, the extra money that was asked for reportedly, um, he said he's, he's come back on that and said, listen, really what we was trying to do is we wanted the, the future of the club to be very clear. We wanted investment in the academy, in the youth um, and in the women's team, etc. Todd Bowie, we saw they've responded to all that, Clear Lake, etc. And he, he, he just come and said, you, you man have flat out lied on my name. Again, again, you man have just come out and flat out lied. You said that I wanted this repaid and I wanted this and you've lied. And he's come out with the statement there where his spokesmen have come out with the statement there to respond. And again, it just, this whole process has been the media just potentially trying to niggle and they're, and they're trying to take advantage of the situation. They know Chelsea fans are panicking. They know this, they're, 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 they're in, a, in a state of confusion and disarray. On top of that, we know the UK government suddenly now absolutely hate um, all Russians and they hate Roman especially as well. Hence why they would like him to obviously relinquish his power and obviously get the hell out. So it's all feeding into the narrative, the media narrative and everybody around it to try and usher and cause as much chaos as possible and try and even make the Chelsea fan base conflict with Roman Abramovich. Why are you not selling the club? Why are you asking for this money back? You said you wasn't going to ask for this. Now you're slowing up the sale. We're potentially going to go bust. Chelsea are on the verge of ceasing to exist. The Premier League, the Champions League will not let them play in the competition next year. Pause. No, no, no. That None, none of all that is going to happen, okay? It's just fear-mongering, scare-mongering, trying to take advantage of the situation. And hence why, when you really read into all of these reports, especially the ones that have been covered recently on the TV, fears. There are fears that Chelsea could, could. Because that way, if you if you say it like that and you don't say it concrete and you don't say it with chest, then when the story blows up in your face and then he comes out with a statement like he has now and rebuttals all that, you could just walk away and say, eh, we didn't really say it was definitely going to happen. We just said there's fears around it and there's worries and concerns and questions. And that's what you that's what you just did. You just you just um, you didn't really want to say it with chest. You didn't really want to fully go out there on a limb. So you just wanted to just skirt skirt around the issue, cause as much chaos as possible. Again, the clicks have come in. The traction, everybody's scared, everybody's asking me, oh my God, you know, this is why we didn't talk about on All You Can Eat Chelsea, because for me, it's just not, it's, it's not what it appears in terms of the level of drama that it's been built up to be, Chelsea are going to go bust, Chelsea are it's, it's all for the rivals, the rivals will love this, they'll soak it in, you know, they'll seep it up, drink it in, a little bit of slurpy slurp, Kool-Aid if anything this has become for them, but it's not Kool-Aid. It's not crack for you. This is real life and it ain't really happening. Do you know what I'm saying? So wakey, wakey. 
Wakey, wakey. Um, so it's nice to have that rebuttaled. Like I said, the sale process for me, from everybody, from everything I could see, is still going along the same way. I haven't seen or, or, or had any reason to really worry about this falling through. So Todd Bowie's going through the necessary steps. You're expecting that to get confirmed in the next couple of days. Everybody that has spoken on him so far has spoken about the professionalism, the preparation and everything like that. So I'm looking forward to, you know, the new ownership and we move. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get what all of this has all been about. But hey, here we are. We'll speak about it in more depth even more tomorrow with um, with with, with, our, with our guest and, and we'll, we'll get to the detail, the real in-depth of everything that's happened. Every single part of every moving piece. Um... And then all your questions and queries will be answered. But for me, like I said, you ain't never seen me sweat. Um, so moving on. Let's moving on. Um, listen, loads of reports have been dropping today. It feels like if, if this was the day that all stories had to get leaked on potential transfer news, for some reason, they're all coming out today. I have no idea why. Maybe everybody's just got in one big group chat and just said, right, we're going to leak all of this today because every single transfer target rumour seems to be dropping for, 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 for our club today. In terms of the outgoings, I've seen ESPN reporting Lukaku um, potentially not fitting in the way that Tuchel would have expected or hoped um, and a little bit too much in terms of what we have to give versus uh, uh, what we what we have to what we have to give to Lukaku in, in, in terms of what we're going to get back maybe is it, is, is it pros and cons not worth it because everybody can always say listen we can do this to our system that to our system but if we change these things does it make us weaker in these areas is it worth accommodating for this man is it not these are the questions that have to be asked and it seems like as if potentially reportedly the guy could be on his way out in the summer as well as Kepa and Alonso also reported by the same ESPN listen you know my stance I'm trying to get that wage bill down. I don't want these backup rotational options who are not really cutting it in, in terms of the Kepis and the Alonzo's of this world to really be here. Not only are they, you know, not worth their wage, but they're also, in Alonzo's case, massively, you know, taking the, the, the actual system that we're trying to put on the team and the actual style that we're actually trying to imprint on the team with the first 11. The reason why we are so off the pace maybe potentially in certain scenarios in the season when we have very little time to train in between games when we have very little time to work on tactics is because we can't stick to our way of playing because our way of playing is non-existent because when we try to inflict that and impose that on a team with the starting 11 and everybody starts to understand you get a few injuries you get a few suspensions a few cases next thing you know the person coming into the team does not fit the same philosophy and style as the person that's going out and that doesn't happen at Liverpool that doesn't happen at City you see the substitutions that are made against Villarreal in that win the players that come in fit the system they fit the identity and therefore Liverpool keep ticking whereas we we at times not only have to change the way we play our build-up play becomes more lopsided whatever have you will it actually becomes a situation sometimes where we have to change formation everybody knows Marcus Alonso can only play left wing back he's not a left back he only plays left wing back. That in itself is a hindrance to the team because we are now subjected to only play one formation because that is the formation he has to play in. He can't play at left back because he can't defend, he can't tackle. So I don't want these limited players, system players in our squad any longer. Ta-ta, goodbye. Thank you for your services. You've done and won a lot of trophies. But I see a lot of revisionism, a lot of Chelsea fans starting to say, oh, we should keep him. Oh, uh, no, not interested. In fact, for me at this point, I'm starting to get so frustrated with the way the squad has been put together that the outgoings are just as more I'm just I'm even more passionate about the outgoings at this club than the incomings at this point that is how stressed I am about the situation um so that's how I'm feeling on that and then like I said with Kepa he makes far too much damn money to be a backup goalkeeper that's not really a surprise that he could potentially be on his way out players that we have been linked with though before we come to a close um Kulabali, very 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 soft links. I'm not going to get too um, carried away with that because you do know with Kulabani, we're linked with him literally every year, every other year. Um, he's been touted by us apparently for a long, long time. And he, he's, he's in the age range that I would prefer that we look into, you know, at least 25 upwards because I do feel like our defence is becoming a bit too young in terms of profile. I do believe that it's very important to have a, a mixture in there, some experience. If you're going to bring in Kunde, who's a young defender, you've got Trevor Chaloba, you've got um, Levi Colwell coming from Huddersfield. Hopefully, Malang Sar is sold. You're losing Aspilicueta already. You're losing Rudiger, Christensen, who's over 25, 25 and up, um, and Marcus Alonso, who's also in his 30s. 
Reese James and Chilwell are quite young. It becomes a very young defence. And I understand we're not winning any league title next year. I've already come out and said that personally, in my opinion. I also don't believe that we have to, you know, keep a hold of players that are coming on to a decline. They're not going to really give anything to us. Again, it's all about value for money. Are you worth your wage? However, to compete, you still are expecting those young defenders to make errors. We've seen it with Trev this season. Levi Cole will have errors, etc. Tomori in his first season had errors. Gurhi would have had errors. All these guys will have errors. You do want a few players to lead. And not only that, if you have more experienced top players in that defence, just a couple, like Thiago Silva, it's easier for the likes of Levi Colwell to learn off those players instead of just having to learn for themselves and fend for themselves around other young defenders. So I am much more um, pro us bringing in an experienced defender because I've spoken about it before in terms of handing over the baton, Aspilicueta to Reese James, etc. I much more prefer if a young player is behind a senior player and then we can, you know, hand over the bat and hand over the experience and go from there. So we also linked with Brimmer um, from Torino. Haven't watched much of him, but I've heard, I've heard a lot um, about him. Brazilian internationals played in the back three for a lot of the season. Centre, um, back in the centre of a back three. And also sometimes on the left, he is right footed. So he's got experience playing in a back three. People tell me he can play in a back four. Like I said, I can't vouch because um, I haven't seen much of him. But statistically, from what I've seen um, just before making a video, looks fantastic statistically in Serie A this season. is leading in interceptions and, and, and clearances and many things. Ball playing ability is something that a lot of people have a few question marks about. But if you are moving to a back four, your responsibility, responsibility in, a, in terms of ball playing does drop off a little bit. You're not expected to step out into midfield like Rudiger has had to do in that left side centre back role. If we're moving to a back four, you just need to be good on the ball. I still want you to be good on the ball. Playing out from the back is what we're trying to do now, but you don't have to be incredible. Um, and you always do try to have some sort of, um, you know, yin to the yang. If Kunde is going to be your really good ball playing defender and the one that maybe, you know, is, 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 is good on the ball and obviously steps up, then you've got the guy that maybe is more stationary and is apparently this guy is very aggressive. He's, he's an old school defender. So... Brazilian, like I said, 25 years old, good age as well. Um, he has experience playing in the back three in the centre of defence. We also have a lot of questions about whether Thiago Silva, um, who's going to deputise for him in a back three with Christiansen gone. You know, Trevor is still very young, probably better to put him out on the wide positions as well. So we don't really have a central centre back in a back three to replace Silva if need be. But if we play a back four as well, this is a, is, is a, is a player that potentially could do that. So there's so a lot going on right now. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of rumours. I don't usually entertain it, but I'm feeling I'm feeling frothy today. I'm feeling I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling for gaze. Um, there's no big six, you know. Well, it's coming. It's coming tomorrow night. Not tonight, but tomorrow night. Um, you won't get away from me, Big Steve and Saj. You won't get away from me either. Yeah. Um, we was meant to do roundabout. The mouse broke. Make of that what you will. But uh, I'm coming for all of you. In a bit, people. Make sure you smash up the icons. Let me know what you think about the statement and the transfer targets, and who could be on their way out. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, special one-to-one -one interview, giving you the lowdown on all the Mazzolinis. In a bit, people. Peace.